There was a real sense of, we can do something special here. And so we agreed that uh, I would join them and that the firm, which was then called Derek Funder Ritten Associates, would change its name and four would be incorporated into the name. We needed, we needed a name for the company that would travel, that would uh, move across borders. And, you know, we weren't thinking of China in those days, but Fallen Funder Ritt in China, give me a break. probably remember that story of one of our bigger clients where they'd read Peter Singy and they'd studied the book internally and, and Derek had been consulting there and they picked up that Peter Singy was a hot topic and he proceeded to take that book on the Friday afternoon, digest it in, in, over the weekend and come back and have a two-day presentation on how to translate that stuff back into yeah. practicality that while with the client. So it was just... He was amazing. Yeah. You know, a, a giant in, in terms of internet. I think just at a personal level, for me, um, he was also a larger-than-life personality, um, and particularly in terms of his risk profile. Just he had no risk profile, so he was actually frightened about nothing. Soon after we, we formed the business, um, significant changes were sweeping across the political, social, and economic landscape of South Africa um, and it was clearly obvious to, to everybody that a new South Africa was on the way and I think we had a sort of sense of purpose that there was something we could do uh, to make a positive contribution to manufacturing in the new South Africa. John Vaughan Jones um, joined us as the fourth member of the team. He has a level of attention to detail that is unsurpassed and unparalleled with anybody I've actually ever met in the professional context. His, um, his track record uh, in, in industry, uh, and specifically in the consulting industry, was something that actually held a great attraction for us. Uh, the Fourgate Square days were very exciting days in our lives. Um, it signalled our first property investment, so it was a, sort of a signal that we were actually getting serious about the longevity of our business. But more importantly than that, uh, what it also signalled was the, the period in which we brought together the technical, the so-called hard, and the people, the so-called soft parts of the implementation technology that now forms part of TRAC. SAB were instrumental in our early development and they stretched our thinking in the early days around um, integrating systems uh, with the situational shop floor behaviour and then extending that across into org design, people development, skills development and so forth. So what was very memorable about that time in our lives um, was that we were we were learning a lot from NAMPAC at the time. We realized that they, they wanted, because it was a national consulting project, they wanted to scale up the shop floor. So we created something called the Team Shop Floor System. Um, and it was a whole series of shop floor modules on teamwork and visual performance measurement and all the good things we talk about today. NAMPAC, to their great credit, began to recruit Robben Island prisoners, uh, political prisoners, as their change agents inside the organization. We then created what we ended up calling the NAMPAC College. Colleges were the seed, ultimately, for track. What we taught, what we experienced, what we shared, what we went on the lines and showed people to do, our pilot processes, all became material for the very early tracks. Doing things on the shop floor and we could run a pipeline with consultants on the line yeah. 
and as soon as we pulled away, they kind of battled to roll it out. So it was that sustainability was a big issue, and uh, you know, so a whole lot of things came together that said, look, you know, we need something more than just that consulting. And we also realised that um, creating capability um, within the clients is what they really what they really wanted. And it's, it's the right thing to do. Yeah. You know, yeah. Not yeah. Yeah. And I, I think what we also sensed was that there was a need to have the standardised process. Uh, because if we were going to be serving a large uh, clients with a larger and larger base, we had to make sure that there was certain consistency, uh, hence the sort of need to codify it and actually structure it in a logical implementation process. The, the take up from the market was very enthusiastic. We got many responses, uh, many people were curious about this approach, and particularly curious that the approach was, was moved beyond being a pure assessment to a product-based solution that companies could use for self-implementation. Of course we were doing all these assessments manually with the aid of the good old engineer spreadsheet. And so we called in a, um, a consultant by the name of Andre Fenter to help us think um, through um, converting these into digital assessments. And so DigiTrack began. This is an example of something we used in our very early days when we were still full of Thunderit. Um, and as you can see, there was nothing sophisticated about this. However, along the way, we sort of certainly upped our game and improved what we had to offer. Um, and eventually came to a much more significant and much more uh, impressive offering um, back in 2003. And I think that sort of was almost the, the birth of a much more serious approach to, to marketing. Before we actually went offshore, we had managed to actually secure some fairly significant clients uh, with the likes of SAB Miller and Unilever. Um, and we were starting to, to work beyond the borders of South Africa. It was obvious at this stage that uh, we needed to reconsider the name of the company. Uh, it was called Competitive Capabilities Africa, um, as Africa was our focus at that time. Uh, and it now became sort of a little bit dysfunctional in the sense that we were now operating internationally. So it was a fairly easy decision to call it Competitive Capabilities International CCI. In the light of our rapid global uh, expansion, we had to think quite carefully about um, the structure of CCI. Uh, at, at that point, 2005-2006, a lot of our clients were global clients. Um, and what we wanted to do is do away with the regional boundaries so that we can better serve those clients. Um, simultaneously, what we had to do was focus, get products focused very much on product development. Um, and take away the, the burden of, of the distribution channels. The turning point was when we found out that track could be applied elsewhere, in other cultures, and that management in other cultures were, were very successful using, using track. If you look at the track logo today, um, you'll see the track line, people, practices, results. And really, it's all about the people who make the difference. As, as we changed the branding, um, we also needed to update the product. And so we started on version 5. This was a major upgrade, both in terms of constants and look and feel. This totally revolutionized our department, particularly since we had to translate it into 14 languages. In 2009, we started to work with some of the world's major global clients, people like DuPont, um, and Heinz, and of course more work with SAB and Fonterra. Because these clients were global with many sites across the world, we actually had to change our implementation methodology. Uh, we had to empower facilitators at these sites to become virtual internal consultants. So the multi-site track implementation uh, methodology was born. The vision was clear to provide our clients with value across the supply chain. It was quite a challenge for um, CCI to embark on this, on this project. And then at the same time, in, a, in addition to the supply chain products, were also all the enabling tracks. I mean, Kellogg's had asked us to have a look at human capital. And then lastly, I think from our own 
really as a future, we felt that developing an environmental sustainability track was, was very important. Yeah. The thing about the track journey is it never ends. There's always more that we can improve. What I enjoyed about CCI when I first started was the management team was quite adventurous and they, as I would describe it, were adventurous entrepreneurs. And there was a lot of freedom that was given to um, people in CCI to create their own journey. What I find being working for a company like CCI has just been amazing. Um, I've been given so much opportunity to, to grow. I mean, I started doing the photocopies and now I'm, I'm running a finishing department. Um, just being able to, to do that and know that somebody has the confidence in you and that you feel part of a family has just been wonderful. That's why I love working for CCI. CCI, first of all, believes in developing people. And I am a product of that. I love to be there. It's like I'm part of the, the family, so I'm happy to be there. The CCI management can create the same environment for them to go out and be bold and do their thing and in the process um, create success for both a company and for themselves. I think we've recognised, as many of our clients have, that um, the organisation itself is the ultimate um, competitive advantage. So we need to, we need to help our clients pull together all the initiatives into one system to help them actually achieve that goal of using the organization as the ultimate competitive advantage. Um, and we're excited about it and yeah, watch us.